I'll go back to something we talked about with chlamydia just a minute ago. Reductive evolution in parasites. People call this devolution sometimes, but I, I think that's a bad way to think about it. I think it's still positive evolution. Evolution doesn't always make things more complicated. Um, but it's certainly true that parasites typically have smaller genomes and simpler systems than free living organisms. And you can draw a plot of genome size and draw a line between obligate parasites and free living organisms. And, and be, that's a pretty good demarcation between the two. Um, this happens in animals. A tapeworm is basically nothing but a, but a set of hooks and, and reproductive organs in a chain, right? Um, tapeworms don't have a circulatory system, for example. They're highly reduced. Why? Why would an organism throw away genes or throw away body structures to be parasites? What's the, what's the selective pressure? It used to be thought that, that, that these things evolved as a consequence of lack of positive selective pressure. That is, in, in the absence of a reason to keep them, the genes would just randomly, you know, would be, would be mutated, and there's no selection away from that. And so they would accumulate in the population. It turns out it's a lot more complicated than that. And there's actually a positive selective pressure for simplification. Think of it this way. The host and the parasite are in an arms race. The parasite is always trying to get the best deal it can get from its host, and the host is, is always trying to minimize the impact of the parasite. So they're constantly battling, constantly trying to, on one hand, improve the immune recognition, and on the other hand, evade that immune recognition. And so the winner is going to be the one that can evolve faster. Right? That's how you win in an arms race, is you, you're more, more dynamic, you change faster. It turns out that in systems, complex systems, how fast you can evolve depends fundamentally on how complicated you are. It's really easy to change something that's simple, and it's really hard to change something that's complicated and all interacting with each other. That, that makes intuitive sense, right? Yeah. Make yeah, right. So, so that probably is true as well. So if you have a complex system, in order to make the next step toward the next level of complication, you're probably better off simplifying if that's a, a reasonable alternative. That's true. So it's easier to evolve simple systems. I think of this um, simple, well, I don't know. When you think about computers or cars, for example, when did they undergo their, their dramatic transformations? Earlier in the revolution, right? When you look at cars from the 1910s, every car is different in very fundamental ways. You go out on the car on the road today, and those cars are almost identical. You have to look at the badge to know what kind of car it is. And this is because they're so highly tuned that any change you make is going to be a bad change. Changes have to be very small and incremental in these complex systems. Whereas when they're simple, you can make big changes and you don't impact a bunch of essential components in the process. And so the result is in bacteria that parasites, if they don't use a gene, they throw it away. And that starts out by simple mutations that inactivate the gene, and then the genes become completely degraded, they become pseudogenes. And it isn't very long before the genes, before gene deletion happens, and those organisms are positively selected for because those sequences don't get in the way of evolution. Um, and they make it faster to replicate the genome and, and, and introduce fewer errors in, in, in processes, et cetera. And so it's really easy to look at, at simplification. Mycoplasma genitalium has a genome that's only 0.6 megabases in size, 0.59. Some genes. That's it. It's amazing. Uh, whereas an organism like I don't know, Streptomyces um, antibioticus has a genome almost 12 kb, in, uh, 12 megabytes in size. 
And they do this, of course, by throwing away genes for phenotype and instead stick to the genes that they need inside their cell and get everything they need from the host. All right, so we're going to leave it at that. Done a little bit early today, that's okay, right?